these are the stars of the future though it, it's funny how it doesn't seem that long ago that you were an inter-county player and now here you are as an ambassador handing out awards to the younger generation coming up yeah it's great for the the miners uh, the minor star awards the electric ireland minor star awards today it was nice to recognize the players after they've had a a nice season and you know a lot of training done a nice spread of players as well. It wasn't just confined to one or two counties. So that was uh, n nice to give rewards to, uh, you know, other, other counties around the place. So from our point of view, it was a good spread uh, across the team. And uh, as I said, met lots of parents today, lots of grandparents actually, and a really enjoyable day for everybody. Uh, it it mightn't seem like it that long ago, but it, I have to go back to 1992 to 94. I was a minor myself. So when you think about it in dim terms, um, it was it was a long time ago, and and when I I look at um, the the goalie minor goalie, I actually played against his dad, uh, senior hurling uh, back in Galway. So that kind of hit it home to me that these these young players are so young, uh, they're very very talented, and hopefully we'll see a number of these players come on to the respective inter county teams in years to come. When you say that, I suppose if you're playing minor ninety four ninety five that kind of year, that's over twenty years ago. In our heads, that seems like only a few weeks ago. You know, we're talking about the Spice Girls and all that kind of thing. And you realise that actually is 20 years ago. But that could be a, path, a rough patch we could fall into with these younger gentlemen that we think they're grown ups like us, but they're not. They're actually children. They are indeed. And I've seen it down through the years where sometimes after minor grade, they're moved up to the next grade under 21 and then they move straight into senior grade. So from my point of view, these players need to be given time to develop and uh, we need to manage the expectations, I think, that's that's placed on these players. They're very young. They're at a stage in their life where they've got exams, you know, doing their leaving certs, uh, you know, and may have girlfriends and uh, et cetera. So uh, college coming up. So there's a lot of pressure on these young, young players. And for me, I suppose, something that we didn't really have to deal with when I was playing minor is the, the whole aspect of social media. And uh, a lot of, they can be open to a lot of criticism if, they play in games and it doesn't go that well for them or they have a bad game uh, that some people might perceive even though they may have had a great contribution to the, the overall team on the day. So that's something these young players need to be aware of and uh, I'm always conscious of, of of how easy it is to criticise inter-county you know, inter minor players uh, in today's world and it's something that Thankfully, uh, when we were playing, we didn't have to deal with that. So um, I just hope that they, they, they're able to deal with that. Uh, it's something new that's after creeping into GA in the last number of years. Uh, and unfortunately, it's, it's, it's probably going to be part of life as they progress in their careers as well. You're probably in the unique position that you can give a perspective on that because, for example, there's you, there's your brother Joe, who's a few years younger, who's still currently playing. And then you have a nephew, Jack, as well, who was involved in minors. Was it last year or two years ago? Last, last year, year. Yeah. So you can see the generational shift there. So between the three of you markers, what do you think has been the big difference say, between your time, Joe's time and now Jack's time? Well, I suppose one of the big things is, uh, you know, I retired from inter-county hurling in 2010 and it was getting to the stage where the demands and the, and the time requirements were increasing all the time. And we, we've seen the, the recent survey there where inter-county players have now to dedicate something like, you know, over 30 hours during the week. That's on top of, if you do have a, a full-time job, that's on top of your, your day job. Now, if you're a student, maybe, you know, you have a bit more leeway as regards your other commitments outside of the hurling. And we probably have seen lots of teams, their average age is starting to drop because um, we've seen it with the Limerick team. The majority of that that, that panel are, are probably still students at the moment. And it probably gives them a little bit more time to dedicate to the inter-county scene. Uh, but for me, I suppose that's one of the changes I've seen is the time commitments required. And the other change, as I just mentioned, is, is the whole, the scrutiny and the criticism that comes through social media, through back in my day, if somebody thought you had a bad game, they'd probably come up and say it to your face. And a lot of the time, you know, a lot of people wouldn't say it to your face. Uh, but now it's, it, players are very accessible through social media channels. And uh, I think it's something that maybe the GA needs to needs to consider. Uh, I know some intercounty teams may have somebody in the backroom panel that that can you know do some education on the whole on the whole background of social media and, and what you you know how seriously do you really take it? Uh, so for me, these young players a lot probably more pressure on these young players than than I would have experienced when I was growing up. A parting thought before you go, uh, you, you've been involved in punditry, obviously Liam Sheedy has as well. He's now leaving that to go back into the inter-county management fold. Would you be in the camp that you think he's absolutely crazy to do that or do you think he's he's done the right thing? 
Well, look, at time will tell whether it's the right decision or not. But you would have to say that it goes to show you Liam's commitment and uh, passion for Tipperary hurling. Last time he was there, he was there for a couple of seasons and won in All Ireland, and then left, you know, um, and and let another management team come in and take over from him. Uh, so he really had, if you could probably, you know, do the, the fairy tale managerial career, uh, Liam Sheedy fairly nailed it, I, I feel, um, you know, won that All-Ireland and then uh, exited. So for him to come back into it, he is probably, you know, putting his reputation on the line, putting his legacy from his previous stint as the Tipperary manager a little bit on the line. Uh, but it just goes to show you that he's a passionate Tipperary man. And he obviously believes that they have the raw material in the county to, to challenge for the All-Ireland. 